I do have one quick question for everybody, though. As winter fast approaches, millions of people, have you looked at your electric bills? Have you had to fill your fuel tank and get that filled yet for your heat this coming winter? Has that drove you broke? Did you have a heart attack? Did you go to the store and have to put things back because you can't afford it? You went over your budget. Did you go to the gas station? Did you end up only be able to get 15, maybe $20 in gas because the prices are all going up? We are in a dire emergency situation here, folks, and we need to, to discuss this. And we need to talk about these things tonight, some of these problems, and hopefully come up with some solutions to these vital situations that we are in. So welcome everybody to Survival Preparedness for Beginners. I really problem that we are having right now and why we are in a dire emergency situation and some of this stuff is just a little bit crazy, folks. I'm telling you, it is a little bit uh, scary, too. Uh, if you all haven't been aware, okay, they just raised the interest rates again. And they've already said that they're going to do it again. Of things that are taking place right now and everything else with the federal government and everything you know, they keep putting out these different numbers and everything. You know, unemployment is at an all still at an all time low. A lot of major companies are starting to cut, cut back on how many people they were going to be hiring for this upcoming Christmas season. You know, everybody from your shipping companies to your retail companies to all your big businesses and everything else. You know, people rely on these type of Christmas jobs to get them through, give them the extra cash and everything else. And what's taking place is um, they're cutting back on how many people they are going to be hiring. Now, what does that mean? That means what's taking place and what the Fed has been doing is starting to work. But they're not going to stop until it hits a certain point, until it hits a certain criteria. Okay, folks? And this is a criteria. Your savings account. If you have a savings account, if you have an emergency fund, you have any of this kind of stuff, the Fed doesn't want you to have that because basically you have a backup. And let's face it, a lot of people right now are having to put a lot of things on their credit cards. Your credit card debt in this country is at all time high. Now, what the Fed wants is they want the unemployment rate to rise a lot higher than what it is right now. They want it between the five and 7%, not the three point some odd percent that it is right now. Okay. Now you turn around, they don't want you to have all this money in your savings account either. So they're going to make things so expensive that you're going to have to start burning through your savings. You see, they want to try to make sure that they have you by the cojones, if you understand what I'm saying. And this way here, they have total control over what you do, what you buy, and the whole nine yards. And this is their way of curtailing this inflation that we are in right now. Now, what else does that mean for you and me? This also means that what's going to take place is you're not going to be able to afford a lot of different things. You're going to have to be making tough decisions on what you are buying. So what do you have to do? You have to make sure that you don't want to play along with their game. Try not to max out those credit cards. You want to make sure that you are trying to do your best to pay cash if you possibly can. If you do use the credit cards, I'm not against credit cards, but if you do use your credit cards, try to pay the balance off before you are charged an interest rate at the end of the month because the interest rates on the credit cards are skyrocketing. You have home prices, you know, all the home sales and stuff, those are all starting to tank. So the Fed, what they're doing is working, all right? The Fed and the government are in two different pages here. The government wants to see more jobs. They're boasting about the low unemployment rate. They're boasting about, you know, the GDP just posted a profit and everything else. And then you have the Fed, on the other hand, they're saying low unemployment rate is not good. 
GDP, a positive, is not good. Companies still staying in business is not good. Unemployment lines don't exist, isn't good. All right. Are you all following me at this point in time? Why are we in such a dire emergency? You have fuel oil prices that are astronomical right now. And they're going to be going up another 27 to 28%. They We're just, still in this whole deliberation thing with the railroad. All right. And uh, we don't know if they're going to come to an agreement, if it's going to stick, if they're going to strike. And if they strike, <clears throat> I don't care what company it is, they're going to be hurting. Walmart included. Walmart. Target every single company out there is going to be hurting. A lot of your shipping companies are going to be hurting too. FedEx, UPS, all them. They use the railroad to move your packages and stuff faster than they can buy a truck. You see, they can put something on a train in Miami, down here in Florida, and send it up to the Northeast, say up into Boston, and it'll be there in no time. I mean, we're in a very dire situation here and people really need to understand this and really need to be paying attention to what is taking place. We have to make sure that what we are doing, we are doing wisely. You have some of the highest food prices that we've seen in a very, very long time. Some of you have never seen the prices this high. Okay. We also have high gas prices. Gas prices are only going to keep going up. Mark my words, folks. Once the election here is over, hold on to your uh, pantyhose because, oh boy, is it going to get interesting and the roller coaster ride is going to begin. Because now some people are reaching out to me from England because they're going through a drastic situation also. You see, we're not in this boat all by ourselves here, folks. This is a world crisis that we are dealing with right now. We are in the midst of something big that is changing. Now, I can't pinpoint exactly what it is. All I'm going to say is there's stuff that's in the works. There's stuff that is happening. And we need to make sure that we are doing our best to be prepared. We have to make sure that we are paying attention to what is going on around the world, not just in our backyard. You see, we can pay attention to what's in our backyard. It's very easy. You can pick up a newspaper. You can hear it on your local radio station, your local news. You can pay attention to what's going on in our country. You can put on any type of um, national broadcast system, you know, NPR. You can put on PBS. You can put on, you know, if you choose to watch a media, you can put those on. You can find out what's going on. The problem is, is what is it that you're going to believe? Because everybody does a different spin on the situations. They all talk about the problem, but everybody has a different spin on the situation. So, and that's why being a prepper is very, very important at this point in time in the times we live in. Because it means you have to put yourself at a less likelihood of something happening to you because you have to go out and you have to go to the store. You have to go here. You have to do this. You have to buy that You and all this kind of stuff. And if you've been prepping and you've put up stuff, and as I've talked about in several of my videos, it's not just about your food. You have to take a whole picture, a whole picture. And you have to see what you use on a daily basis, you and your family. That's just how we have to do it. It's the safest way to do it nowadays because of all the craziness that is out there. Now, granted, not everybody out here is going to be able to go out and, you know, and have a year's worth of food and everything else. But having a three week supply of backup food isn't a bad thing. You could use it as a working pantry. And then you always have stuff that you can fall back on 
say if you get sick. Oh, maybe you get a bad storm. Maybe you just don't feel like going to the store. You have the food. You have your supplies. You have everything you need. So you can just stay in the comforts of your own home where you're safe. And you don't have to deal with the madness that's out there in the world. 